Today I'm going to talk about forget about closure with the narcissist. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. You know, we all want that closure when we're at the end of a relationship and in a healthy, balanced relationship, you can have that conversation that you need so that you can have that closure. And there's things that you'll cover in that discussion that will help to, to end that chapter gracefully. And some of those things that you want to discuss is, well, where did we go wrong? And in these, this conversation, you're hearing from either person and you're listening to, and it's a loving time even though it's a closure time, it also can be a very loving time where there's communication, kindness, respect, and consideration as well. So you may also want to cover how could we have done things better? And that's a great thing to talk about because we all want to be a better version of ourselves and understand humanity more and understand relationships better too. And Moving forward, you may end the uh, partnership, uh, marriage if it is, or whatever kind of relationship or rapport you have with that person, but you always want to maintain amicability too. You never want to like cut off a bridge, why would you? And if you're ending gracefully and getting closure, you can do that. The next question is, recognizing that each of you want the best for each other and that, you know what, maybe we just drew apart. And that can happen in relationships as well. And recognizing that and understanding what went down, what, what, what happened, but also appreciating the time that you've had together. And then another area is having loving compromise on splitting things up. So let's say you did move in together, you, you share household items to lovingly part with different things and come to a mutual agreement as to who gets what. This is all part of the closure period when ending a relationship. So in closing that chapter in life, you don't have to ask why or scratch your head in wonder for the rest of your life. And this can be a very fulfilling time for the both of you because you're sharing your hearts, you're sharing your memories, you're sharing well wishes, and you know that the decision you made was based on mutual consideration, communication, and respect. And so your closure is actually a time where you, you feel very satisfied. However, not so with the narcissist. With the narcissist, there is never going to be any type of closure with that person, him or her, because they, they are not into communication. They are not into consideration. They are not into kindness. They are not into respect. So you cannot expect any of the things that I talked about in a healthy departure, a healthy closure. You won't, please don't expect that from the narcissist. I get asked so many times when I'm counseling, Nanette, how can I get closure from my ex-narcissist? And I have two words that I give them. You can't. You cannot expect to go back to your ex-narcissist who has handled you so poorly with such bad behavior, who has berated you, belittled you, used you, done dirty secret things behind your back, you couldn't or wouldn't expect any type of healthy closure. So I tell my clients, you're not going to get any closure because let's take a look at how things ended with the narcissist. Let's see. Let's say the discard was from the narcissist. It came suddenly, swiftly, painfully, accompanied by lots of rage, accusations, judgment, belittling, and absolute confusion on your part. And in that discard, here are some of the phrases I'm sure a lot of you have heard 
your ex-narcissist say to you? And the first one is, you'll never find a love like mine. That is exactly the phrase my ex-narcissist used on me when I discarded him over a year ago. And I say, praise God, I will never find that kind of fake love from anyone again because now I know, now I know what the MO is. And you know what? I have a motto. Once you know, you got to go. That's right. You can never stick around a narcissistically abusive relationship once you know what you're dealing with. And so, yeah, that phrase gets used a lot. You'll never find another love like mine. Number two, you never loved me like I wanted you to, so I found someone else. Hmm. Number three, it's your fault I'm leaving. Number four, no one's going to put up with you like I did. Number five, you're just too much work for me. Number six, don't even ask why. You know why. And meanwhile, you really don't know why. However, that's a good phrase for a narcissist, right? No accountability for them. And then number seven, you need help. I'm out of here. So those are just a few of the really harsh, judgmental, criticizing type of phrases you will hear from a narcissist as they discard you. And I want to tell you this, you're not going to get closure from them and you're not going to get closure from doing any of the following. So there will be no closure with you. One, watching his or her social media continuously you won't get any closure in that. There will not be any validating their horrible behavior by saying, you know, see what they, look, look what she's doing now. Look what he's doing now. That will never bring you closure. That will just bring you more pain. And number two, you won't get closure by wondering how quickly will they devalue their next victim and feeling validated that yes, you were a victim. That's not going to help you either. And number three, answering the inevitable Hoover to ask one more time why they left. And that just will, again, open up that wound. And number four won't give you closure either. Writing their family members to explain everything that really happened. You know, I'm sure a lot of us thought, you know, I, before I go, I want to let everybody know what really went down between me and the narcissist. To be honest with you, most of them already know what he or she is like. They have years and years ago understood that they want nothing to do with them. So they basically tolerate them, him or her, at family events. Uh, at certain get-togethers, they keep it very minimal contact with them. You must know this. And even if you were to tell some of their family members and they act surprised, it's because they don't want to dirty their hands. They don't want to admit that they already know. They, a lot of them, they don't want they don't want to mess up their own relationships or their own family dynamics by getting into the pig pen with the pig. To be honest with you, they do not have the discernment spiritually, number one, to even know what they're dealing with. And number two, they don't, they don't want to. They just really want to leave. There's a, a, a saying, leave well enough alone. And that basically is don't get involved. And that's what a lot of the family members, that's not going to do anything. In, in fact, it will just make you look a little desperate like you're trying to defend yourself. And you don't need to defend yourself. You don't. You know the kind of wonderful, kind, loving person that you are. You're the empath. You're the good person. You're the Christian. And you give goodness out of the, the purity of your heart. So you never have to go back and defend yourself to anyone or prove yourself to anyone. And the fifth thing that will not bring you closure is keeping in touch with his or her friends to find out if they're talking about you or if they miss you. 
Because let's face it, they never really loved you. They were using you. You were just an object. And when somebody gets a different object to replace you, they don't think about the other object anymore. Unless the object, they, the new supply object that they just took on isn't working quite right. Then they might come back to Hoover you because you were a better tool. And I talk about this in some of my videos. You know, a lot of channels will say, get out of the harem closet or the harem garage, but that communicates sexual uh, relationship type of thing. You can have, you can still stay in the narcissist toolbox by a lot of other means as well, such as running them to the airport because they couldn't catch a ride and you, um, well, I'll just do them that one favor, or ma making sure that you're available for, let's say it's tax time, and well, you know, I've always done their taxes, so I'll just do that for them. You must get out of the toolbox. Staying in the toolbox only makes you accessible as one thing, and that is supply. So here's how you're going to get closure after a breakup with a narcissist. And this has helped so many people already. It will be your road to healing. And number one is once you start learning about the MO of what you have been dealing with and you now know that this was narcissistic abuse, I have this motto, and I mentioned it earlier in this video, is once you know, you got to go. That's right. Once you understand what you are dealing with, and these people are demonically driven, these narcissists, they don't have your good intentions, best intentions, any intentions other than to destroy you, to cause you pain and suffering. That's what gives them their jolly, their sick jollies. And you must know that, that the love bombing, it's not even love, it's fake love. It's a fake love bombing. Let's call it what it is. All that was, was to hook you into an attachment with them. And then from there, they do their dirty deeds. That's right. They keep on doing their belittling, berating because, you know, they're so insecure. They want to feel like they're on top all the time. They have the superior position and they want to let you know that you can't do anything without them in their sick mind, right? And so there will never, ever be any staying with a narcissist once you know the M.O. You got to go. The second thing that's going to help you with your closure is knowing this, that narcissists do not want to be rehabilitated. No, they don't think that they need help. In fact, they think that you need the help. So knowing that they do not think they have anything wrong with them, they don't want your help, their relationship is doomed from the beginning. So no interventions, no therapy and counseling, no sitting down with your best friends or having a family powwow with the narcissist, you know, as the, the focal point. That's not going to work either because you know what they'll do. They'll resort to their playing the victim and, you know, the tears start running down. They're, they're really good with the tear flow, you know, the waterworks. And it will end up backfiring on you. And even if, let's say a narcissist does tell a therapist, oh, you know, I'll change, I'll repent, I'll be a good person. You know, that's just to get that therapist off his or her back. And then when you get back to back home to the ranch, right, all hell's going to let loose. So, you know, you have to understand that there is no rehabilitating a narcissist. And again, the number one reason is because they don't think they need help. And the third thing is going to God's holy word for enlightenment and understanding that you were in a spiritual warfare. That's very deep. That's the deepest level you can get. You were in a spiritual warfare with that narcissist. 
And you know what? Righteousness cannot cohabitate with lawlessness, which would be the narcissist. And light in you cannot cohabitate with darkness. And that's why it never worked with the narcissist, nor will it ever work with a narcissist or any other toxic person. And here's a great verse in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 that I want to share with you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the spiritual warfare we're in with demonic forces. So you don't want to live with somebody who's hosting devilish influences. That's not any place you as an empath, a good person, a child of God, you should not be in that realm. That's not where you belong. You belong with like-minded people. And I'm going to share that with you in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And it says, do not be unequally yoked or paired or teamed or partnered with unbelievers. For what partnership can righteousness have with wickedness? Or what fellowship does light have with darkness? None. Absolutely none. And that's why that mix of a narcissist with a Christian, an empath, a good person, will not work out for you. You must know this. And there's, you know, I understand about fighting for love, you know, true love, love that's real. The love that the narcissist said he or she was giving you was not love. It was an act, if you will, a hook, just a ploy, something to get something out of you, an arrangement, if you will. And the fourth thing that you can do for closure from that narcissistic relationship is basically that, close all doors that lead to you. That means blocking everything from on all your social media platforms, blocking that person on your phone, emails, having your family, your friends, block, block, block them as well so that there's no little opening for the little mouse to go through, no little crack in the floorboard or no little crack in the window. You must keep zero bread trail for the narcissist to come and find you. And look, there is no satisfaction in checking out social media to see how soon the your ex-narcissist is performing his or her evil on their next victim. There is no validation. There's no satisfaction in knowing, yes, you see, he or she was and is evil. No, you know what? You don't need to know what evil's doing. You just need to spend time with good, your heavenly father, God's word, God's people. That's what you want to surround yourself with. And number five, keep growing in God's word. Immerse yourself in holy scripture. Spend tons of time with your heavenly father it's the most soothing comforting and healing time you will ever spend and recognize that that you were in a spiritual warfare and god's word says to arm yourself with the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so that's why being in god's word is so critically important for you right now because those attacks that you were getting and may still get from the narcissist you want to be prepared with Holy Scripture and you want to know what the Word of God says as you wield that sword of the Spirit. Look, you want to recognize your position in Jesus Christ and that power of Holy Spirit that is within you and that that power is greater than any of the devilish spirits that the narcissist entertains and does the devil's bidding for and that you have perfect right to come boldly before God's throne of grace. And I'm going to read that to you in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. And it says, let us therefore come boldly and with confidence to God's throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. 
and these are very needful times times with getting past the narcissistic abuse and healing and just the evil in general in this day and time just to know that we can come boldly before our heavenly father's throne of grace and number six of what you can do for closure is make a list of all of your attributes and maybe today you can only sit down and and think of five but make that a running list because you know what I guarantee you're vacuuming tomorrow or washing dishes walking the dog you're gonna think of three more seven more eight more until that list is as long as two arm lanes because you know your value you know you know down in your heart and from God's word who you are and all the love and the kindness and the goodness that you've tried to bring forth in your life and for however long you were with that narcissist that was squelching you and suppressing you and pushing you down and just making you feel like you weren't uh, worth anything but I'm telling you you are and especially in God's eyes you are precious in his sight so I want you to take a look at these lists again and start your own closure between you and your Heavenly Father and know that that's where you get validated is with God Almighty and his word and you don't need to have anybody verify the hell you went through because y'all want to tell you this, God sees everything that's going on. That's right. So know that he keeps the record. And I want all of you to be well on your healing journey. I want you to understand that you have great things ahead of you. There's so much wonderful, amazing potential within your lives. And I am with you in prayer with love. And I want you to share your comments down below. Let me know things that are on your heart, scripture, how you felt about the content in this video. And if this helped you, do hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.